Hello everyone, I'm Sony Patnaik. Welcome to the HDFC Securities Derivative Mastery Webinar Series. A warm welcome to all our viewers on the first webinar. Today's content that we are going to cover in this session would be on a basic understanding of derivative and its market participants. Now let us understand first what derivative is. As you can see from the first point, it says that it is a financial instrument whose value is derived from an underlying asset. Let us understand this in a very simple language that all of us can actually relate to. It's a cricket language that we'll follow and understand what derivative is exactly. So we all have been following the IPL 2018 tournament that just went and we saw that Chennai Super Kings won the IPL 2018. Now, for example, if we were betting on Chennai to win the entire IPL 2018 tournament for this year and when it won, it, uh, it got uh, the prize money, it got uh, the championship title of IPL 2018, it got a trophy, it brought value to its team, glory to its team. So when Chennai won all those things, we say that it had a direct investment in these particular parameters. But there could be people like the rest of us, the common man, who are probably making some unharmful bets against each other with our friends, with our relatives, where we are betting that Chennai is the team that is going to win IPL this year. So the moment we make such unharmful bets against each other, we become derivative. And Chennai over here becomes my underlying asset. So as Chennai wins, I make some returns out of that unharmful bet against someone. So this is what derivative is all about. In a proper stock market language, we put it as it's a financial instrument whose value is derived from an underlying asset. This underlying asset could be your equity, could be forex, could be commodities, anything, etc. Derivatives can always be traded in two ways, in two platforms. One is an exchange traded platform that happens anonymously between two parties on a platform. Or the other could be on over the counter where two people stand against each other and they make more of a barter exchange kind of a system. This is what over the counter means. So basically over here in India, wherever we have to follow the futures and options, it does mostly, the uh, trading is mostly done on the exchange traded platform. There are four kinds of derivative products. We have futures, options, forwards, and swaps. So forwards are your customized contracts, whereas your futures and options are the only contract derivative contracts that are your standardized contracts. So this is the difference between a future option and forward. We have focused more on future and options for this webinar, and we have covered this in the further slides exactly what it indicates. But before getting into the details of what future and option is, we would like to understand the benefits of derivative. Why derivative is important in today's market, how it can help us. The biggest strength of derivative actually lies in its data. In derivative, we have a rich load of data available with us, readily available with us in, indeed, that helps us to understand the market sentiment. So this is one of the biggest strengths of derivative as we put it as. The other benefits can be that it has high leverage, it has a good hedging possibility, which we are covering in the next slide, of course. And uh, But just to remember, because you know why derivative is more important is because of its data point. It has so much data that even a non-trader can understand the signals that gets generated from the derivative market and make a guess or analyze where it is heading towards. Now moving on to the next slide. This is in the details of uses of derivatives. The first derivative usage that you can see is it has uh, to, uh, the capacity to earn money without any physical settlement. The theory says that in derivatives there is something called as a physical settlement which happens mostly in case of commodities. If you are holding any agreement, if you are holding any agreement on any kind of a commodity and the end of that contract expires, you would have to physically settle and or physically deliver that to the other counterparty. Whereas in derivative, especially in futures and options, you do not have that physical settlement. In futures, we say in theoretical terms, there is something that you are obligated to have the physical settlement of the shares, whereas in practical, it does not happen because in India, we have it, uh, we, the derivative is actually more on a cash settlement process. So over here, what it, the advantage is that you can take a trading bet on a particular security and then underlying, make a contract with the counterparty anonymously and earn some returns out of it, something without 
having actually physically settled on that particular stock. The other use is an arbitrage trading that we say. Arbitrage trading is nothing but taking the advantage of a misprice calculation between two different markets. So in one market you buy one stock and the other market you sell the same stock because there is a the difference in both the prices in both the different markets. So this is where arbitrage trading helps us. The other kind of uh, use or advantage of derivative is leverage. Leverage means where you take small amount of margin but you get higher exposure to trade and derivative. And along with leverage, we also have something called as a liquidity. Liquidity is nothing but the number of buyers and sellers in that particular underlying. The exchange always takes care of all these stocks that are there in the derivative market. Currently, it is of 237 stocks in the derivative market. And the exchange takes care of ample number of buyers and use sellers to be there in that particular underlying. So that liquidity never becomes an issue for all the derivative stocks. The last but the most important advantage of derivative is called hedging. Hedging is usually understood in terms of insurance. When we take insurance, we protect ourselves from something bad happening in the later date. Hedging is also understood something in these lines. You have stocks in your portfolio or you have stocks in your DMAT and tomorrow you see the market being too volatile. There could be some price correction, there could be the markets correcting, anything could happen in the market. And to save yourself against such unseen volatility or the unseen negative part coming into the market and you save yourself by taking a counter position in the derivative market. So you are basically hedging your position. So this is what hedging means. It is nothing but a protection against the price fluctuation in the market or in the particular underlying that you're holding. So these are the basic advantages and uses of derivatives. Taking a quick recap, the first strength of derivative is that it has a rich load of data which is readily available to all the layman in the market to understand, analyze and know what the market is going to happen tomorrow. The second advantage is of hedging against price fluctuation. The other advantages is where we have leverage and liquidation, we have arbitrage trading and you can make money without any physical settlement because in derivative everything is in cash settlement in India. Moving on to the next slide, we'll just understand the basic difference between cash and derivative market. In cash market, to buy or sell anything, a 100% margin is always required. But in derivatives market, we do not require that 100% of margin because we have something called a prefixed margin which is almost always about around 20 to 30 percent at max. It is known as your deposit or margin. It is only for futures and whereas in options, oh, you only require the premium amount to be made. So this is the first difference between cash and derivative. The other difference is that in cash, the ownership remains with you until and unless you have squared off the positions. Whereas in derivative, the ownership remains with you until you see the squared off the position or till the last Thursday of the contract month because in derivatives we have something called expiry. Every last Thursday of the contract, the contract ceases to exist which is known as your expiry day. So if Thursday is a holiday, the expiry falls on the preceding day, that's Wednesday. So either you square up the position willingly or before or if you do not square up the position, the exchange automatically squares up that position for you on the expiry day. The third difference between cash is that in cash you can buy or sell any quantity of shares. There is no compulsion. Whereas in derivative we cannot trade in ever odd quantities because in derivatives market we have something called a lot size. Lot size is the predefined number of shares that you can buy or sell in the derivative market. This lot size is always defined by the exchange and every stock or our index have a different lot sizes. For example, Nifty has a lot size of 75, Bank Nifty has a lot size of 40. So every stock or index, they have different lot sizes, which is already predefined by the exchange. And in derivative, we can only trade in those lot sizes. The last difference of cash and derivative is that in cash, there's something called delivery, which is to be given or taken. Whereas in derivative, there is nothing called delivery. So this is the basic difference between your cash and derivative. 
in derivative another advantage is that we have four instruments available to trade or take position they are known as your index options your index futures stock futures index options and stock options index is something that you know it's it's a basket of all these stocks combined and the weighted average of all these stocks in that basket is what an index actually means so we have nifty and bank nifty as a index or indices to when it goes to plural and these are the instruments available in derivative segmented trade or take position in now moving on to the next slide we'll understand the basic for market participants in the derivative market basically we have three kinds of market participants first arbitrages hedges and speculators these are the three kind of traders uh, three kind of market participants arbitrages are the ones who take the advantage of mispricing between two markets as earlier discovered in the first slide itself where arbitrage trading and arbitrages is the same thing so where we have traders who are taking the advantage of this mispricing between two different market if in the cash market the price is lower in the futures market the price is higher so you can sell in the futures market and you can buy it in the cash market so this is what arbitrage opportunity of, of presents itself as so there are basic kind of traders who take advantage of such mispricing the next kind of a market participant is known as your hedges so when we read in the uses of derivative we covered a point that hedging against fluctuation of prices so the traders particularly who are uh, who take such action against the price fluctuation are known as your hedges so these are the traders who wish to protect themselves from the risk involved in price movement they participate in the derivative market by undertaking an exact opposite trade in the derivative market this is known as your hedging activity and these kind of traders are known as your hedges the third kind of market participant are your speculators now as a hedger you are risk uh, you do not like to take much of risk because you are protecting your risk but when you are taking an activity where you are protecting your risk you pass on that risk to someone else now there are a set of people in the market who are willing to take that risk from you they are your speculators so it means nothing but speculators are unlike hedges they look for opportunities to take on this risk in the hope of making some returns as a hedger when you pass on this risk to someone else they willingly take it from you they are known as your speculators so these are three kinds of market participants one arbitrages who look for arbitrage opportunity where there's any mispricing in the two different markets hedges are the traders who hedge the position against any kind of market volatility and speculators are the short term risk traders who speculate or who are uh, who, who are betting the price of a particular security to reach a certain level in some further date so these are the three kinds of market participants moving on to the next slide now we'll cover what exactly futures mean so futures is actually an agreement between two parties always the two parties are one is a buyer the other is a seller so in futures also it is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a certain price and a certain time in the future given date this is what futures mean where two parties anonymously they make a agreement they enter into an agreement where they are expecting the price of a particular security or asset to move to some level so this is what futures mean in order to create a position in futures you require a margin amount now this margin amount can be in terms of cash or collateral stocks which an investor must must put up to open an account and start trading in futures so if you do not have cash but you have stocks in your portfolio you can keep that as a collateral and start trading in the futures market margins are always charged to both buyers and sellers position so the first initial position that you require to take in the futures market is known as your initial margin it is computed on a standard uh, it's it's it's, it's is computed on something called as a span margin a standard portfolio of analysis of risk so any margin which is charged above and over the span margin is known as your exposure margin the third kind of margin that we must understand very important to know is your mark to market margin which is also known as m to m margin it is calculated on the daily basis at the closing price of a contract as you can see over here in this example 
we have a future contract called abc future contract which is trading at currently 100 rupees for example this lot size of this contract could be 2000 you have bought this future contract of abc at 100 rupees on day one the stock price goes to 103 so you are in a profit of 3 rupees you haven't squared of the position but you are still holding the position so on the day one the 3 rupees profit and the lot size is 2000 so if you multiply 3 into 2000 it is at 6000 positive m to m on day one on day two this same stock rises further to 107 from 103 so on day two the profit is 4 rupees and your m to m is 4 into 2000 that is 8000 positive m to m on day three you have the stock falling from 107 to 102 so on day three you have entered into a negative m to m of 5 rupees or 10000 rupees 5 points or 10000 rupees as on day three but if you have to square up your position on day three you are still ending up in a profit of 2 rupees because you bought this contract at 100 rupees and on day, through, day 3 you are closing it at 102 which is still a profit of 2 rupees. So this is how M2M is calculated. It is always calculated on the closing price on a daily basis. So this is what futures, the basic of futures is all about. The initial margin, the exposure margin and the calculation of M2M. Now moving on to the next slide is a very basic example of understanding how futures move. Now we know in market there always has to be two counterparties to trade in anything. So there's always a buyer and a seller in the market. So one is taking a buying position, the other counterparty is taking a selling position. This of course happens anonymously on the exchange traded platform. So you never know that who is the one who sold it against you or bought or has done the counter trade against you. Now in this example, we have similar two people who have taken the position in a particular stock and they have, count, they have taken the counter position. So the stock is ABC, ABC three months future contract that we have taken and we have Mr. Sharma who is buying this, uh, the, this ABC contract at 350 rupees and we have Mr. Tripathi who has sold this contract at 350. Now there can be only three scenarios tomorrow. The contract actually goes to from 350 it goes to 360 if it goes to 360 mr sharma who has bought this abc future at 350 would be in a profitable position of 10 points whereas mr tripathi is losing out 10 points the other scenario is that when the stock falls to 340 rupees in this case mr sharma is losing 10 points but mr tripathi is gaining 10 points because he sold this future at 340 350 sorry and the third scenario is that the price remains unchanged at 350. So in this case, it is neither Mr. Sharma nor Mr. Tripathi paying or receiving anything as the price has not moved at all. So this is a simple understanding on an example of futures and how it moves and how the profit or loss comes into the action based on the movement. Moving on to the next slide, so we'll understand what options are first. So as in futures, we have a buyer and seller in options also, we have someone as a buyer and a seller. So option is also nothing but the financial derivative that represents a contract sold by one party. That is the options writer or we also call it as the options seller to another party that is known as your options holder or your options buyer. We'll understand this in a very basic example of options. Supposedly, we have Mr. A who is holding some shares of ABC Limited and we have Mr. B who wants to buy 500 shares of this ABC Limited from Mr. A. But Mr. B does not have the all the margin or all the uh, money at the moment to buy 500 shares of that particular stock from Mr. A. And the current market price of this stock, for example, let's say is currently quoting around 150. So in this case, Mr. B will make a deal with Mr. A that if tomorrow the price rises from 150 to 200, Mr. A would have to deliver 500 shares to him. So because Mr. B does not have that entire margin to buy 500 shares, he would pay a small token amount. This token amount is something called as a premium. So Mr. B and Mr. A are agreeing that at 160, they would buy, uh, Mr. they would enter into this contract 
at 160 and the moment the price goes to 200 mr a would deliver 500 shares to mr b and mr b would end in the profit so oh in this case what happens is that the 160 that both of them have agreed to enter into is a predetermined level which is known as a strike price and option so this 160 is the strike price the price of this 160 could be quoting at supposedly 10 rupees so 10 rupees is what is the token amount that mr b is paying to mr a for one share so this entire deal is done only on a very basic premium amount if we will visit to the first slide or, with, or to the third slide where we had the difference of cash and derivative the first difference where we had in cash was that if to buy or sell any number, number of shares you require 100 percent margin but in derivatives only 20 percent margin is required in case of futures but in options if you remember we covered it as a premium amount only so this 10 rupees that the premium that mr b is paying to mr a is that premium amount so your margin is quite less only only limited to this 10 rupees and your risk is also limited to this 10 rupees so this is where mr b and mr a have come into a contract and tomorrow this price of abc rises to 200 mr b would be in a profitable position of 40 rupees so this is then how or this is how option is understood mr b over here is the options holder or the option buyer mr a over here is the option writer or the option seller so this kind of contract that offers the right but not the obligation to buy or sell the security at an agreed upon price that agreed upon price is your strike price so in this example b and a agreed upon a price at 160 so this 160 is your strike price and they have agreed it for a certain period of time on a specific date so options can be of two types a call option and a put option you can always take either of the position in both the options you can have an option buying position or option selling position if you are the buyer of the option you have the right to buy or sell at a defined price but if you are the seller of the option or in other words if you are the writer of the option you have the obligation to buy or sell at the defined price so in case of option buyer you pay the premium and your risk is always limited only to that extent of the premium and your profit can be unlimited in case of an option seller you receive the premium your risk is unlimited over here but your profit is only limited to the amount or the extent of premium that you have received moving on to the next slide the basic terminology is related to options so as we know there are two kinds of option call and put option the call option gives the buyer the right but not the obligation to buy a given quantity of the underlying asset Whereas the put option gives the buyer the right but not the obligation to sell a given quantity of the underlying asset. The price at which the buyer pays to the seller is known as a premium. And strike price as already covered it is the predetermined level at which a specific derivative contract can be bought or sold. So options and futures both have the same lot size and the same expiry date also. But in options, when you have a bullish view, you can either buy a call option or you can sell a put option. If you have a bearish view, you can sell a call option or you can buy a put option. This is the basic difference between futures and options. Now, moving on to the next slide, we have a basic example to understand the call option on a buy side. For example, we have the stock over here, ABC, whose current market price is at 497 and the buyer of this stock is bullish and expecting the price of the abc to move somewhere to 525 35 40 on a higher side so he buys a call option because as we read if you buy a call option you are bullish so if you bought a 500 call option of abc the premium is at 4 rupees so your break even point is your strike price plus the premium 500 plus 4 so the moment the stock crosses and closes above 504 on expiry day, the profit will come to the buyer. So your risk over here is only limited to the extent of 4 rupees. So even if the stock is falling to 460 or 400 also, or even if it goes to 200, your price or your risk is always limited to this 4 rupees. And over here, the reward is unlimited depending on the price movement on the underlying. 
as you can see from the payoff diagram over here the moment the break even point is crossed the profit starts to rise and if the if, if, if it does not cross at break even point but the stock falls your risk is only limited to that 4 rupees only right so this is a basic example of how a call option buy works the next slide tells us the example of a put option buy this is the same kind of calculation the same risk and reward ratio the only difference over here is because you are buying a put option you are bearish on this stock because you are expecting the stock to fall from a certain level and you are bearish so you have bought a put option so over here your break even would be calculated as a strike price minus the premium whereas in the previous slide because it was a bullish a uh, bullish view so we were adding the strike price plus premium to find a break even over here we are subtracting it so over here if the stock is at 503 you are buying a 500 put at 4 rupees your risk is limited only to 4 rupees and your break even is 504 500 minus 4 that is 496 the moment stock falls below 496 profit will come below this level and profit can be unlimited depending on the downside movement of the underlying so these are the basic examples of option buy coming on to the next slide some basic factors affecting option pricing the first factor is your underlying price underlying price is always directly proportional to the call option premium and inversely proportional to your put option premium if my underlying price is rising my call premiums will rise my put premiums will decrease and vice versa if my underlying is falling so this is the first factor that affects the option pricing the other factor to affect is a strike price as already covered before in the previous slide that strike price is your predetermined level at which you are buying or selling a uh, particular security the other a factor to affect the option pricing is your time to expiration so we have something called expiry as we have covered every last thursday of the contract is expiry and as we move closer to the expiry option premium starts to decay they start to decay towards turning into zero so this is how it affects the option pricing the other uh, factor is a dividend so dividend actually uh, affects the cash price of the particular stock on which the dividend is declared but because derivative is always a derived value from the underlying asset the moment the movement the price changes comes in the underlying price so because of the dividend declaration the uh, effect is also seen in the futures and the options market the other factor to affect is the volatility so volatility is nothing but it shows you the movement on the up or the downside and it calculates how much should the premiums move because of this up and down movement so this is what volatility calculates for us as the option pricing and the last factor to affect the option pricing is an interest rate interest rate again also is in directly proportional to the call option prices and inversely proportional to your put option prices and if the interest rate is falling it is vice versa so these are the various factors that affect the option pricing it's your underlying price a strike price time to expiration dividend volatility and interest rates okay now moving on to the next slide some basic important terminologies under options to cover your intrinsic value intrinsic value is the difference between your strike price and the spot price strike price we know it's a predetermined price that we buy or sell in the derivative market but spot price is the price that is in the deriv in the cash market or the underlying price Uh, underlying asset price in the cash market is known as a spot price other uh, uh, terminology to understand is a time value or we call as a theta so it is nothing but the time to expiry of the contract and as the expiry date nears the option premium starts to decay we have three important terminologies to remember one is in the money out of the money and at the money so in the money or known as itm it has intrinsic value how to identify whether it is in the money option for in the money call option if your strike price is lower than your spot price it is an in the money option for example if the price of abc is 100 rupees and the call strike is of 90 90 call strike so it we say that it is a in the money call option because 90 is lower than 100 for in the money put option your strike must be higher than the spot price again if the spot price is 100 but my strike price is 110 110 put so this becomes an in the money put option 
for out of the money option it does not have any intrinsic value so out of the money call option your strike price must be greater than your spot price but for out of the money put option your strike price must be lower than the spot price and if we say it is an atm or add the money option it means that when the strike price is equal to the spot price so if my strike price my spot price is 100 and my strike price is also 100 it means that it is an add the money option so these are the three important terminologies to remember when it comes to identifying which kind of option strikes they are so moving on to the next slide a very basic example of things one must do and one must not do when it comes to trading in derivative what you must do is that always to work on official research recommendations only what you must not do is do not to work on any anonymous tips or anything without a research consultation you must always identify your risk reward ratio usually a risk reward ratio should always be one is to two kind of a ratio before getting into any kind of a trade never to take any high risk with unlimited risk but limited reward so this is a uh, this is a wrong calculation of a risk reward ratio you must always take considerable margin exposure and only to the extent that you know you are able to pay the mpms on a daily basis if your view has gone wrong and if the stock is falling never to take a larger exposure where you are not able to pay the m to m things to do would be the last would be a follow discipline trading where to maintain the stop loss or hedge your positions at all time so this is where you get into a discipline kind of a trading activity and always be thorough of the concept of derivatives get more into future and options details and be informed always about the market how to trade with us you can visit our website hdfc security hdfcsec.com you can download our mobile application or you can also sub sub subscribe to our pro terminal and if you visit our yes, website hdfcsec.com you would find there's a tab on the top hand side called as a research tab so when you click on the research tab you can refer to all our research recommendations along with its report with the target and where what view we are holding on that particular stock under this particular option so to start trading into derivatives you can have or you can avail online derivative privilege on the website hdfcsec.com we have a tab product so if you click under that you'll get a derivative privilege once you click on the derivative privilege it will guide you through the next steps of how you can avail the der online derivative privilege and the third would be to start trading you can visit us via mobile application you can download it you can also do the trading via call and trade you can go to our empowered site or subscribe to a pro terminal a pro terminal is a web trading platform for accurate market decisions the next slide shows the uh, small screenshot of what this pro terminal is all about so it is a good software which gives us a lot of good features and good data points to make accurate decisions as you can see on this screen over here we have three important features over here the uh, left hand top is a fno pulse Below that is a 15 minutes build up where it will give you the 15 minutes build up of the activities in the futures and contracts on options contract and you would it will help you to understand the intraday movement on that particular security. The other uh, on the right hand side you can see is a screener. So you can uh, view the top 50 most active stocks traded in FNO or the top gainers top 50 gainers and the FNO stocks and it will give you the list of all the FNO stocks according to that particular uh, according to that parameter you can also trade in uh, over here as you can see there's a buy and sell option over here you can just click on it and trade on it also and we also have something called as a strategy input strategy feature in the pro terminal where you can just go and according to a view that you're holding in any particular security and then in any stock you can just draw put in your target price and it will click out and it will give you a set of strategies that you can trade in that particular uh, in that particular stock with that target price so these this is the basic of uh, uh, the entire futures of the entire derivative market and its market participants and we have more upcoming webinars we have the next is on understanding the basic of derivative data analysis 
where we would be covering some basic jargon such as open interest, put call ratio, volatility index, implied volatility and how these become a parameter in understanding the trend of the market or the trend of any stock. So this is what we will be covering in our next webinar session that is on derivative data analysis to be taken on 9th of June from the same time, 12 to 1 p.m. Thank you. And now if there are any further questions, you can just type in on the question and I would be addressing to the question. Thank you. Okay, the first question that we have is from Mr. Dinesh, who is asking how to, who buys a CE. A CE is a call option. The full form stands for call European. European is a way, uh, there are actually two kinds of settlement of options. One is European uh, settlement, another is an American settlement. American settlement says that you can settle the option any day before or on the expiry date. Whereas European, op, uh, European settlement says that you can only settle the option on the uh, expiry date itself. So this call option is uh, Mr. Dinesh is asking us who buys a CE. So Mr. Dinesh, like we've covered in the option, when you have a bullish view, you can buy a call option. So a person or a trader who has a bullish view or is expecting the stock to move uh, in the market, you know, to move higher in the uh, coming trading sessions, these are the kind of people where you don't want to take a lot of risk, but you want to get good amount of returns on it without taking much risk. These kind of traders, they buy a call option. When you have a bullish view on that particular stock, you buy a call option. The next question that we have is Mr. Uh, Mr. Indrajit, who's asking us how to set a stop loss. Mr. Indraji, uh, setting a stop loss would differ from, uh, you know, trader to trader as uh, you are comfortable with taking a risk reward ratio. Like I mentioned, the risk reward ratio should always be 1 is to 2 or 2.5 also it can be. So it can depend on from, it can uh, vary from trader to trader. One trader can have, uh, you know, one, one person is comfortable with taking 1% of risk for an intraday kind of a movement or intraday kind of a trade. Whereas on a positional kind of a trade, some people can take a 2% risk also. So it would depend. So what happens is that supposedly you bought something at 100 rupees and you do not want to take more than 2 rupees of risk. So you would put a stop loss at 98 rupees because you cannot, you do not want to take the risk beyond 2 rupees. So 98 becomes your stop loss and this is how you set a stop loss. The another question is that we have is from Mr. Vivek who is asking how to analyze a put call ratio of any stock option and what is the implication on the same. Uh, Mr. Vivek, this is a put call ratio, this is a parameter and indicator of how to analyze which we would be covering in the next webinar series that is on the 9th of June where we would be covering this parameter. So I request you to log in on that time and then we can uh, take the uh, entire, uh, you know, we can take the details of this put call ratio. Okay, Mr. Prakash is asking how to pick a call, you know, which is bullish or bearish. So again, Mr. Prakash, we would be covering something called open interest. This is a parameter. It's an indicator that uh, helps us to understand whether there are fresh long positions being built in the market in that particular stock or fresh short positions being built in that particular stock. And this we would be covering in the next webinar series because it's an indicator. So post the understanding of open interest, you can understand whether the stock is bullish or bearish, whether you must go for a buying option or a selling of option. The next question is from Mr. Sanjay, who's asking how future is carry forward in the next month. Mr. Sanjay, this is actually a typical kind of a, uh, you know, concept that we call as rollover, where you square up the position on the last trading day of the contract, which is on the Thursday, which is on the expiry day. You square up the position on that day and you take the similar position in the next series. So this is how a rollover is done and this is what it means to carry on your futures position forward to the next month. 
So this rollover again concept, we are going to cover it in the next webinar session. So because it's an indicator and it's a, a, a complete uh, data analysis where we would be covering it in the next webinar session. The next question is from Mr. Rakesh who's asking, can we roll over options? We cannot roll over options. Again, as I said, rollover is the indicator that we would be covering in details in our next webinar session. But just to answer to your query now, we cannot roll over options. It's only futures position that we can roll over to the next series. Options will always expire in the end of the expiry contract. Okay, we have another question from Mr. Anand who's asking if is covered call strategy a relative safe one compared to other derivative strategies? Mr. Anand, we would be covering a few basic derivative strategies in the third webinar session that is learning option hedge trading, where one of the option hedge trading comes under as the covered call strategies that you want to understand. Uh, again, you know, I think uh, when once we've covered what kind of strategy it is on the third webinar session, it would be clear for you to know whether it's a safe strategy or how risky it is. Again, it is a hedging kind of a strategy where you have stocks in the cash in, the, in your portfolio and you're selling a call option to hedge your position. So this is a covered call strategy. It's a hedging strategy. It's not exactly a, a strong foolproof kind of a hedging strategy because it will cover your risk only to a limited extent. However, we would cover this in the third webinar session. I request you to log in on 16th of June for the third webinar session. The next question is from Dayal, who's asking, does the call option has predefined quantity? Yes, Mr. Dayal, like I've already mentioned in the slide, futures and con options both have the same lot sizes and the same expiry date. So in options also, you have to trade in that number of lot sizes only. It always has to be in multiples of lot sizes. It cannot be in quantities. So this is again, yes. Mr. Manoj is asking again how open interest is related to price. Again, Mr. Manoj, this is the indicator that we would be covering in the next webinar session where we are, uh, where we are understanding the, all the derivative datas, data points. So request you to uh, log into the next webinar session for the same. The last question again, Mr. Dayal is asking if is pro terminal available for our traders? Yes, Mr. Dayal, pro terminal is available for all our traders. You can subscribe to it. You can also download a mobile application, which also has a pro terminal in a mobile application. Right. So uh, the rest of the questions. OK, then again, I would like to uh, you know, there are a lot of questions, which obviously, but I would like to address all the questions and individually reply to each of the questions. I have your email IDs over here. Thank you so much and I'm looking forward to the next webinar session for 9th of June where we are going to uncover the derivative data and points. Thank you.